Welcome to another Fact of Fiction Friday. I am the guinea pig, Christopher McKell. He is a professor, Jason Parsons. This is actually the second act, the second time we've shot the same video because I accidentally deleted it. Um, this guy, he's, and he's supposed to be the computer nerd. He's the one that messed up the technology yeah, this time. I never said I was a video guru. Um, but this is a great, great, great video. You know, you know, it's gonna blow your mind, blew my mind when I learned a couple of things and things we'll touch on at the end of this. So we're talking about organic fruits and vegetables are better than conventional fruits and vegetables. People think organic is the way to go. If you eat conventional, the pesticides and stuff will kill you. <laughs> and from my conversations with the professor, I believe he's got something under his sleeve to tell you. If I had sleeves on, I would definitely have something. You got sleeves, short <laughs> sleeves. So not very much, but whatever. Oh, you just want to reply. Just this sleeve right here. <laughs> Sorry, gratuitous. I apologize. Sorry about that. So this is uh, something, and I say this regularly in these videos. It's one of my favorite topics uh, because people bring this up all the time. When I have nutrition discussions with clients, such as Chris, and many other people, they'll oftentimes ask me about the difference between organic fruits and vegetables versus conventionally grown because they are have heard on. Uh, on the internet, uh, Facebook, all, all different places that they need to eat organic. Of course, organic's better for you. So one of the things I want to focus on as we go through this video is, is the word better right here. So organic fruits and vegetables are better than conventionally grown. Better, how do we qualify what better is? Well, what I did is I broke down into five categories the comparison between organic and conventionally grown fruits and vegetables so it can make sense for you. So the first category, nutritionally, so the content of nutrition inside those fruits and vegetables. We got pesticides, a very important one for a lot of people. The taste and looks economics of growing the different ways and then of course how it impacts the environment so let's start with the first one over here the nutritional content of the fruits and vegetables as they're grown organically versus conventional there's lots of studies on this subject out there hundreds of them actually where they compare various different fruits and vegetables and tubers and, and legumes and all kinds of stuff that's grown in these different ways to see is there more or less of the micronutrients inside them and a little bit of the macronutrients macronutrients are proteins, carbs, and fats. Micronutrients are the vitamins and minerals inside these, right? So when you look at those studies across the board, there's a lot of them, right? And sometimes you can find out there's some meta-analysis, which is basically a study of studies. They take a whole bunch of these studies and compare them all together to see what do they all say on the whole. The reality is conventional is actually a little bit better than the organic. Now, it's only a tiny little bit. It's very, very small amount. That's why we put conventional is greater than or equal to organic. Just a slight edge to conventional here as opposed to a, a large difference. But there's not, a, there's not a big difference. There's some of them have a little bit more sugar, some a little bit less sugar, some a little bit more uh, calcium, some a little bit less. But it's not dramatic. It's not something that's going to make a huge impact in your life from a nutritional standpoint. So maybe we don't really need to worry about that one too much, right? Pesticides, this is probably the number one thing people talk about when it comes to organic farming as related to conventional farming. And unfortunately, a lot of people out there think that when it comes to pesticides, organic farming doesn't use any. And that's just not the truth. The reality is there are more than 40 different types of pesticides that are registered to the United States Department of Agriculture as being viable for organic farming. They are necessary to make sure all the pests I like Chris's little bug over here. I did better this time. Last time I had like 30 legs on them. Yeah, this has six. That's appropriate. I like that. Six, six legs on there. It's not a spider, so it doesn't have eight. So six. Good job. Excellent. I don't know what kind of bug it is. It's dead. That's all that matters. <laughs> Must have gotten contact with one of those 40 pesticides Chris uh, knows comes from organic farming. Pesticides for organics um, are very uh, weak. They don't, they're not very strong, not very potent. So typically when you organically farm things, yes, you're using pesticides to kill the bad guys out there that are eating your crops but you have to use larger amounts because it's not very strong, right? As opposite on the other side, conventional farming uses very potent, very strong, very concentrated uh, pesticides that can kill those same bugs and things like that to make it so the crops can grow and not have all kinds of problems with them. So the reality is they both use pesticides, right? So they're just different uh, potencies, if you will. Organic's not as potent, so you have to use more of it, and then the conventional has a little more potency, so there's less of it, right? So you can see here, Conventional is pretty much equal to organics here. So it's, it's 12 of this one and six of that one, but they end up equally out in the end of the day. Now, there are pesticides used on both. So as a consumer, as somebody eating fruits and vegetables that have been farmed in either way, we don't probably want to have those pesticides going inside us and getting concentrated, causing issues with our bodies. Typically, manufacturers out there are good at cleaning stuff off and making sure that they're all clean by the time you get to your grocery store, if you're just shopping at a regular store, if you're going to a Whole Foods or someplace that has organic, things like that. Ultimately, to make it so you don't have to worry about this issue, 
Wash your fruits and vegetables off before you, before you stuff them in your face. Use a little Arm and Ham and baking soda, a little crisp picture over here, mm -hmm. to uh, take some baking soda and some water, wash them off real quick, rinse them off before you chop them up and cook them or eat them raw or however you consume your fruits and vegetables, and you're probably not gonna have an issue at all. That baking soda and water mixture right there can get rid of pretty much 100% of any pesticides that are remaining, if there's even any on there, after they've been shipped off to the local store. So it's a non-issue really, and they're pretty equivalent here. So it's nice to know that. The next category up here, taste and looks. A lot of people make um, anecdotal claims. Anecdote means that it's my personal experience, right? My personal experience is I can tell, totally tell the difference between Pepsi and Coke. And those kind of do have a different taste. But when it comes to an organic apple versus a conventionally farmed apple, the reality is it's virtually impossible to tell the difference visually, right? They're, they look the same, the apples, the apples look the same. But as we talked about back here in the nutrition category, sometimes there is a slight higher amount of sugar, that macronutrient sugar, inside of conventionally farmed fruits and vegetables. And as we know, the sugar content of fruits and vegetables, if there's more of it, it tastes better. More sugar tastes good. There's a reason we consume so much sugar in this country, because it tastes yummy. I love that stuff, right? But of course, as we know, too much of anything can become a problem. So back to our two apples, the organic apple versus the conventional. The visual appeal, pretty much equal across the board. But when it comes to taste, there is a slight advantage to a conventionally farmed one because they tend to have a little bit more sugar inside them just based on those farming practices. So if anything, conventional gets a slight edge over organic. Ugh. What's going on organic? Tastes, it tastes better for less price. Wow, speaking of price, let's talk about that. This next category here, the one that's most important for purchasing for consumers and for farmers themselves is the economics of the farming method. So this one is not even close. This is a complete blowout here. The reality is for organic farming, it costs 25 to 40% more for you to purchase the same exact apple in a Whole Foods in the organic section as to opposed to your regular store that you pick up that same apple. Looks the same, tastes a little bit better for the conventional one, has a little better nutritional value, and holy moly, it costs 25 to 40% less for conventional as opposed to organic. And the reason is it's expensive to farm organically. There's a lot of uh, criteria that the United States Department of Agriculture puts in place for organic farming. The uh, economy of scale, the bigger the farm becomes, it's real hard to scale out like you can with a conventional farm to keep intact all those hoops that they have to jump through for organics. Uh, the special facilities they have to use to make sure that they're not getting overspray from conventional farms nearby. They have to have certain distances between the farms or use certain equipment. And then of course the cost of organic pesticides is actually higher. Remember I said earlier when we talked about pesticides, Organic pesticides are not as potent, so you have to use a larger volume of them to get the same effect as a smaller concentrated conventional pesticide. Well, larger volumes of pesticides, even though they're organic, means more money. And that higher cost of pesticides, the higher cost of special facility, and the inability to have an economy of scale means it costs more to buy organic. And there's a reason when you go over to Whole Foods, I'm not beating them up, love Whole Foods, I'm just pointing out why it is far more expensive for organic foods over there as opposed to your regular grocery store and your conventionally grown foods. So it's just not a fiscally viable thing for the farmers and or the consumers to feed the planet when things cost significantly more in that organic situation, especially when it doesn't taste better. <laughs> it's using more pesticides organic. And then of course over here, the nutritional value, it's actually got a little edge to the conventionally farmed stuff. So. Something to consider there. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last one down here, environmental impact. This is also something a lot of people really take to heart and are very concerned with, just like pesticides, because pesticides are part of the environmental impact. This part here might be more of what you're actually consuming, the impact on the ground and how the earth is affected by conventional versus organic. Um, they're pretty equal in different ways, right? Conventional farming has a greater ability to have a smaller amount of land produce a larger amount of crops. So conventional is better when it comes to land use. You don't have to use as much land, you get way more food out of it, as opposed to organic. On the other side of the spectrum, we have organic being much more effective at how it impacts the actual land that it's on, what it does as far as um, the pesticides that do go through. Even though there's a larger amount of pesticides, they're not as concentrated and potent, so it's not as negatively impacting there. And or the organic farming techniques tend to not strip the land of as much nutrient value, um, so it doesn't have as much of an impact there. So there's a little bit benefit for land usage for conventional, a little bit better um, land 
impact when it comes to organics over here. So ultimately they sort of equal out. That's why we got C equals O. Conventional is pretty much equivalent to organics as far as how it affects the environment. Right. But just to, to keep in mind for everyone, we spoke about this, the organic side uh, being better for, for the land itself, mm -hmm. but we've been doing conventional forever. That's true. Farmers are rotating crops through the same land to get make sure the nutrients are only being used for a certain type and then they switch it out to use the other nutrients while the other ones come back and, and you know cycle through that. That's so. a great point Chris. That's something a lot of people don't take into consideration. It's not like we just started farming a couple years ago and it's a new thing. It's been hundreds of years that we've been farming on large capacity scale. The agricultural industrial revolution has put us in a place where the explosion of population of humans on the planet has necessitated and demanded that we get better at our conventional farming, which is the vast majority of how we get fruits and vegetables on the planet is conventional farming. That's internationally everywhere in the world. So those conventional farming methods had to be really good at using the land in a, uh, in a manner that's sustainable, that's long-term purposeful. So that means when they use, I don't know, corn for this season, they have to rotate it to a totally different plant the next season so that they're not stripping all the nutrition out, but rather rotating the value prospect in the land that it's being used. That's a great point, Chris. Right. It's not like it's gonna, we're gonna turn to the badlands here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and another thing to keep in mind, we spoke about this, and this is for all those organic lovers out there uh, that live and die by this. Die is a key word there because Jason told me uh, that it's impossible for us to feed the entire earth with however many billions of people we have yeah. with just organic farming by yeah. itself. Not enough land, the economics, yeah. the cost of it isn't possible. It would be impossible. We'd actually be killing more people. We already have problems feeding the world and you know certain areas like in Africa and other places that um, you know, we help support uh, the causes there. So by wanting to go all organic, it's really not possible. It's really challenging here in America for us to wrap our heads around this problem to what Chris is speaking to, because in America, seven of the top 10 causes of death are lifestyle attributed, right? And most of those causes of death here in the United States of America are from eating too much food. We have great uh, businesses and, and, and environments around us where we don't have to move too much. We're in Chris's office right now doing this video. Chris sits at a desk most of the day doing his computer stuff over there using his big brain and he doesn't move as much. Now the nice thing is he goes to the gym, he goes out and runs, he does all kinds of physical activity to take care of his body, but that's not the average American. So the average American sits still most of the time and they have an overabundance of food. So most Americans, their lifestyle death attributes come from too much food and not enough movement. Now, set America aside, the rest of the planet, number one cause of death is famine, not enough food. So in reality, even with conventional farming, which is the most efficient and effective from an economic and land use standpoint, we're still not feeding everybody, right? If we were to right now snap our fingers and switch to all organic over the planet, millions and millions and millions more people would die of starvation because it's just not a viable means of feeding the masses. So something to consider, when we look at people that have this altruistic belief system, they want to take care of as many people as possible with as good of food as possible, we have to take into consideration it's not viable to be able to feed the number of people we want to using organic farming methods. And as you showed here with pesticides and whatnot, you know, conventional fruits and vegetables, they're not going to kill you. <laughs> no. no so. Unless I throw them at you really hard or something. Right. <laughs> so the whole thing uh, about being able to feed the, the planet kind of blew my mind when I when I heard that. So I hope it was a little eye-opening to you. Uh, was to me. I am the guinea pig. He is professor.